This is Winning Cures Everything. Here's your host, Gary Seegers. Let's fire in. It is Winning Cures Everything. I am your host, Gary Seegers. You can follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE, or you can follow the show on Twitter at Winning Cures. You can follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Winning Cures Everything, or just go to the website. It's got everything over there, winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe to the podcast, subscribe on YouTube, share the show out, help us out, get those numbers up. We appreciate it. Our goal here, if you have not watched, is to give you some news stories, sports stories from the day, and keep you entertained for about 15 minutes. That's it. Nothing major. You know how it goes. Today's rundown, Friday, February 15th, a fake recruit got ranked by rivals. We'll talk about that and the impact of it. Uh, Kaepernick, what he wanted from the AAF to play, and he has settled his collusion lawsuit against the NFL. NCAA is reviewing their transfer guidelines, and we'll discuss that along with college basketball picks. We give them every day. You can go over to the website and get the gambling picks there. Let's go ahead and, uh, and jump into it. The show is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. Topic number one, a fake recruit was actually ranked by rivals. Blake Carringer, 6 foot 6 inch, 315 pound offensive tackle, supposedly out of Knoxville. I believe the name of the school was Grace Christian Academy. Uh, He posted on Twitter about offers from Syracuse, Alabama, Florida, Amherst College, etc. Uh, rival, rivals.com rated him a three star. They even gave this guy an evaluation. I don't know how you do that with no film on the guy or even checking to see if he's actually on a roster. Uh, the headshot on Twitter was of Corey Stevens, a 2017 Arizona State signee. SBNation.com has got an incredible story on this. 247 Sports came out and said, all right, here's here's how we do it. If we don't have a ranking on the guy, we're not going to put him in our composite anymore because he showed up on 247 because Rivals.com and ESPN's recruiting rankings automatically populate into 247's composite ratings. They ranked this guy a three-star because he had an Alabama and Florida offer, or at least he said he did on Twitter. They did not confirm this with anybody. They did not do their homework. But Rivals saw it on Twitter and immediately gave the guy three stars. So if you thought that guys are getting rated more favorably because Saban offered him or Jim Harbaugh offered him or Urban Meyer offered him, et cetera, et cetera, that is absolutely true. This guy did not exist and he was a three-star because he said he got an offer from Alabama. That blows my mind. Like, you would think that people would actually do their homework on these things. Instead, and it I understand because recruiting is crazy. There are so many prospects out there. I mean, think about how many high school football teams there are. And on top of that, you've got, what, 50, 60, 70 kids on each team, maybe more. I don't even know how many you're allowed to have in high school. You got all of these kids, and you have to go through all of these and try and rank them. It is impossible. It is You can't keep up with this stuff. So I, I get it, but at the same time, before you go giving somebody a three-star, maybe check out some tape. Maybe figure out whether or not they're actually on a roster. Otherwise, you're going to get got. And Rivals.com absolutely got got. And Shannon Terry, who is the uh, the head of 247 Sports, absolutely lit Rivals.com up. Called him little brother, all this kind of stuff. It was, it was a lot of fun to watch. Go find Shannon Terry's, Shannon B. Terry uh, on Twitter. Go find him. He roasted him, and it was great. It was great. Uh, next topic, Colin Kaepernick. Let's just talk about Colin Kaepernick. $20 million is what he wanted from the AAF in order to play in the minor league football season or minor league football league this season. Okay, I mean, that 
you're like twenty million over how many years like, for one season. He wanted two million dollars a game. The entire salary pool, the total salary pool for every player in the AAF is twenty eight million dollars. And Kaepernick wanted twenty of it just for him. That is mind blowing. Mind blowing. Now, obviously, they knew that they were wanting to use him, or, or Kaepernick knew that they wanted to use him as PR for the league, right? They reached out to Tebow. I'm surprised they haven't reached out to Johnny Manziel. I would imagine he's going to be in the XFL, right? I mean, he he seems to fit that kind of league. Uh, but it, this whole thing, I mean, he would be making $2 million a game. Aaron Rodgers, who has the highest salaried contract in NFL history, only makes $2.1 million a game. That is mind-blowing stuff, right? And that's that's averaged out over four years. Obviously, he's not making $2 million, Aaron Rodgers, uh, $2 million a game this past season or this coming season. But, like, by the end of it, he will be making over $2 million a game. Why Kaepernick ever thought he would be able to get that, I have no idea. My guess is he already knew when they talked to him about this that the collusion settlement, which they announced today, um, I'll go on and read the official statement from their lawyers. For the past several months, counsel for Mr. Kaepernick and Mr. Reed, that's Eric Reed, have engaged in an ongoing dialogue with representatives of the NFL. As a result of those discussions, the parties have decided to resolve the pending grievances. The resolution of this matter is subject to a confidentiality agreement, so there will be no further comment by any party. Obviously, we're not going to figure out exactly how much these guys made. Uh, Eric Reed got a job in the NFL. He just signed a new three-year contract with the Panthers uh, that's worth $22 million. I would imagine Caps is probably more than that. Who knows? And we'll, we'll, we won't be able to find out. But I would guess it was probably more than the $20 million that he wanted from the AAF. If he goes and plays in the AAF, it might hurt his chances in that collusion settlement so I, I get it, right? I get it. But either way, asking an upstart league for $20 million is bonkers. But it you got to look at it like this. Like, here's an analogy, right? Say you want to hire somebody to do a job. Like, you want to hire somebody to do flooring, like Chris does, right? And they come in, and they don't really want to do the job, so they just completely price themselves out. They don't really want to do that work. And they charge an exorbitant amount of money. That's kind of what Kaepernick was doing. He didn't really want to play football. So I'm just going to toss a number out there. And if they can't hit it, then I'll just say, okay, well, never mind. That's the way I look at it. So I don't think he really wanted to play football. I mean, even the Seahawks, when they were taking a look at him, they didn't really want to or they didn't believe that he really wanted to play football. He wasn't dedicated to the game. So I get it. Uh, next topic up, topic number three, NCAA is reviewing transfer guidelines. And this is after all of the complaining by coaches and administrators that it is too easy now to transfer from one school to another. I think it's actually horse crap. And you know me, obviously, if you've watched the show long enough, Chris always talks about how I am the uh, uh, the big program guy, how I want what's best for the big programs. Not true. I want what's best for the kids, but at the same time making it where there is some kind of rule and regulation, right? I think the way that they are going about these, if there was some kind of a precedent, that would make more sense. I think that coaches and administrators are irritated at the lack of precedent. They don't – the NCAA does whatever they want to do with every situation, and there's no rhyme or reason to it. You can't understand any of it, and they don't have to explain themselves. They just give a ruling, and it's done. Uh, the reason that it has been brought up, 19 out of the last 29 players that have transferred have been granted immediate eligibility. That's a massive number compared to what it used to be. It used to be where you had to really, like, 
working, and this is in college football. It does not include basketball, but 19 out of 29 in college football, that's that's pretty good odds. I mean, that's two-thirds. If you are going to transfer, you have to have a valid reason to be able to play immediately. The rule is if you do not, you have to sit out a season. In the past, it's been uh, I'm getting closer to home so that I can visit like a sick relative or a sick parent, something like that, or the situation at the school that I was at uh, was not safe for me or put me in an uncomfortable position, da 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 Now it can just be kind of anything. You can come up with whatever because all these kids are lawyering up. The NCAA does not want to get into the business of fighting lawsuits over these kind of things. It's it's interesting. It's interesting to say the least. I mean, it, in the back in the day, two-thirds of kids would have never been granted immediate eligibility. You'd have one or two or three here or there that actually had valid reasons. Now, if they don't want to sit on the bench – like Justin Fields at Georgia, and now he's granted immediate eligibility. I mean, he just signed a national letter of intent last season. He played in, what, 12 games this year? 13 games, however many? I, you know, like I, I, I understand the kid wanting to leave, but there should be consequences if you don't stick to a contract that you signed. And, yes, I get it. Coaches are not held to the same – thing but this is also a teaching tool for kids there are still a ton of look at media personalities if you have a non-compete clause at a say a radio station you cannot go on the air for another station for six months to a year after that if you break the contract there are consequences so, and whether it's financial or whatever, but with these kids, the consequence would be time. And not a lot of them want to serve the time, and I get it, but, you know, I, I think maybe, like, I, I want what's best for the kids, but I also want them to learn about the process and understand how big of a decision it is on National Signing Day. And some of them may not ever get it because, I mean, you're only 18 years old. You don't know any better. But if the, if the NCAA continues to make it super easy for people to transfer, I mean, it will continue to be the wild, wild west. And coaches better just get used to it. You make enough money as a coach to deal with guys coming in and out of your program. Bottom line. And if you can't get used to it, then find another profession. Go to the NFL. Go to the AAF. I mean, these coaches get compensated fairly well. Just uh, just my two cents on that. Let's jump into the college basketball picks for today, for Friday, February the 15th. We went 3-2 and two last night. Brings our overall total to 133, 107-4. and four. That's 55.42%. We are profiting on the season. That is definitely a good thing. I got five picks tonight. I got three sides and two totals. So let's jump in. Here are the rotation numbers for them. 878. We're going under 160 and a half for Buffalo versus Toledo. We are at 866. I'm going right state minus one and a half. They have won uh, several games in a row. At Northern Kentucky is a good basketball team, but on the road, they do not play as well. Right state at home plays much better. I'm rolling right state minus the one and a half here. Uh, 876. Quinnipiac minus three and a half at home against Marist. Again, Quinnipiac playing really well lately. Marist, not as good on the road. Uh, 872, under 130.5, Manhattan versus Niagara. Manhattan, they do not score. They do, they don't score. And my numbers have this at 122, and the total is 130.5. Yeah, I'm going all under that. Uh, Ken Palm has it under. Sagarin has it under. Massey has it under. I go back and I look at the games. This should be under, like, Niagara. They score, and they can score a lot, but 130 seems like it could be too much because I don't think Manhattan is going to score enough to get the entire total over there. Uh, 867, Monmouth plus 7.5 at Ryder. Monmouth has won 
like eight straight games and Ryder has has not covered against the spread in nine straight. Uh, I think the Sharps might be on Ryder here. I'm going with the team that is winning right now. Monmouth is absolutely rolling. I'm going to take them plus seven and a half, uh, even on the road. I like that. As always, you can find the picks over at winningcureseverything.com. Go into the navigation bar, click gambling picks right there, or just type in winningcureseverything.com slash gambling dash picks. Or if you're watching on YouTube, it's right down there in the description. Uh, as always, follow us on Twitter. You can follow me at GaryWCE. Follow the show at Winning Cures. We're on Facebook, so go like us over there. Uh, the show will be on Facebook. The show is on Twitter, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Check out the website, winningcureseverything.com. Hit that subscribe button on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, whatever your favorite app is. Hit subscribe on YouTube. Leave us some comments. Tell me what you think about the show. Tell me what I need to do better. Chris will be coming back in. We'll be doing some shows every week. Uh, hopefully starting next week as we get closer to March Madness. Uh, But yeah, comment, share out. We love you guys. We hope you have a good weekend. Good luck tonight on the picks. As always, we will have picks on Saturday, but you got to go to the website to get them. We appreciate y'all. We love you. We will see you next week. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.